Do you still remember what your first MySpace song was? Or maybe your first AIM screen name? How about the names of your old Facebook albums where you'd upload, give or take 200 pictures from one night out? Do you remember Rugrats and Hey Arnold, Ringback Tones, the first CD or tape cassette that you bought? If you obsess about all of these very important existential questions, then the Nostalgia podcast is for you. I'm Nicole, host of Nostalgia, where we have deep conversations about superficial things. If you like the pod and want to join us as we unlock major core memories, please subscribe on YouTube, follow on Spotify, and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. I really, really appreciate your support as the show grows. We also have a weekly newsletter with pop culture news, playlists, time capsules, trivia, and more. It's at nostalgia.substack.com. I am so glad you're here and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Nostalgia. I'm really excited to have Bridget from Literal Trash 2004 with me here today. I absolutely love the name of that handle. It's absolutely perfect and it really sums up kind of like the hedonistic, trashy culture of the 2000s that is back today in 2022. And we're going to talk all about kind of the concept of like, what is trash the difference between something being in bad taste versus just kind of conflating low culture with having bad taste when in fact having bad taste can be an amazing thing welcome Bridget exactly. thank you for having me I'm so excited me too where did you kind of get the inspiration to start your account how long ago was it were we already talking about the resurgence of the 2000s Oh, I think that it was, I think six years ago. So like this past November was six years. Um, so I, yeah, I was in college and I was just like, I was following a different like Instagrams and Tumblrs and stuff. And just, I loved like those ones that had just random photos of celebrities and like just random pictures of pe people together. Um, and I was like saving pictures on my own. So I'm like, oh, I can do that. So I just kind of like started it like just for like me and my friends. And then I found like people who like the same things as I do. Um, yeah, so I've met like so many cool people from the Instagram. So I'm very lucky. That's amazing. And I love seeing how things have kind of come full circle with this trend cycle in that we're seeing the fashions come back. We're seeing a new generation of people who it's so funny when I see on meme accounts where you'll see a scene whether it's from Mean Girls or something from the 2000s and someone will comment. This is usually with edits. They'll comment like movie. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, stop. There are people who are born now who don't recognize it. And it's like, yeah. It's, it's wild. It's this whole kind of new exposure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll even post someone that, like, I think everyone knows, like Ashley Simpson or something. I'm like, everyone has to know who Ashley Simpson is. And then someone's like, who is this? Love this song. I'm like, wow, this person's probably like 13 and they probably never have heard of Ashley Simpson. That's wild to me. It is wild. And Ashley Simpson's autobiography is one of my favorite albums of all time. Just no skips at all. Oh, it's so good. I listen to it like once a week. It's so iconic. I, I would agree with that. And I think too, with albums and kind of like the single culture that is now where it's like people just listen to it's the hit clips culture, essentially, <laughs> where people just listen to one song from an artist, and then they move on to the next thing. I do think that with Ashley Simpson's autobiography, if just anyone, anyone and everyone out there who hasn't listened to it before, should do themselves a favor. Yes. And, and then listen. watch the Ashley Simpson show of her making the album and you'll get like a sneak peek of how she made it. And that's like cherry on top. Even better. That's incredible. And I know that you have an affinity and a love for what was kind of referred to at the time as like the Britney wannabes. So literally anyone who was just a pop girly who was not Britney was constantly compared to her even pink like in her one of her songs where she mentions Britney Spears feeling kind of like that pressure to conform and then Britney or Avril was like the anti Britney or whatever what's your your thought about kind of how 
we can never just have like girls exist in the same space without having there be that kind of competition especially back in the day like with Britney like everyone was like they saw how successful Britney was they're like everyone needs to be Britney and nowadays like there are different types of people but it's still kind of like they want someone to be like someone else but back in the day like I loved Willa Ford and she was kind of like the bad girl Britney but she was still like they were pushing her to be Britney and like Mandy Moore she was like so young but they were pushing her to be like a Britney but like I still love the music even if they look back and like Willa Ford doesn't like her old music Mandy doesn't like her old music like I love it I think it's so good yeah I think it is too I think I want to be bad is a great song and I think what was even greater was that I was at I don't know how old I was nine or something like that when it came out or ten And so just being like, like, it wouldn't have been as fun if I was a full fledged teenager or young adult, like it makes it funnier that I was just literally this child dancing around the living room to that song. Yeah, you're so right, actually, because I think if I was like a 22 year old woman, I'd be like, what is this? But like, it's funny because I was like nine and I was so obsessed with it. Right. And the whole idea of like, I want to be bad. It's like, that means like taking a cookie out of the pantry, not like actually doing yeah. something bad. So, I, you know, yeah, <laughs> our, so funny our I, perception. Yeah. I was talking about like uh, MTV spring break the other day and I was talking to my mom. I was like, you let me watch that when I was like a child. And she's like, did I? I was like, yeah, I can't believe I was watching that at like eight or nine years old. Yeah, I know. Some of the content matter. It's so funny because nowadays we're like, oh my God, this is so inappropriate. But like things were also inappropriate back then. But oh, yeah. you ha- it's just like applying it to the different cultural zeitgeist. Like whatever people consider inappropriate today is just a reflection of our attitudes today. Whereas then things were still inappropriate. It was just, it's not really comparing apples to apples, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's like so different now, but like with my niece I'm like oh I don't know if she should be watching this but like my mom let me do whatever I wanted to do yeah I even remember how when I was younger there was this website that I found where it was I don't remember what it was called I wish I did but it was this site where there would be all these different movies and it would have a picture of the movie cover a synopsis of the movie and the ratings and the rating would be based on how appropriate or not it was for kids oh, wow. and so I was like oh I would try to do research to figure <laughs> out you know which movies were like just gonna make it because Legally Blonde was okay mm-hmm. <laughs> but then you know American Pie wasn't yes <laughs> and so kind of navigating that I think it's interesting because nowadays yeah mo- movies still have ratings but I think with social media too, it's like things are so accessible Mm -hmm. now to anyone. You can log into your parents' account on your Netflix or whatever, or your, I was going to say pay-per-view, but that dates it a little (laughs) bit. Um, When you buy movies off of your fire stick or whatever, it's different now. Yeah, for sure. I know like back in the day you had to like sneak into a movie theater or like go like sneak into like your sister's room and watch something like it was very hard to get away with stuff back then yeah I would agree with that I think that the main thing that we look at from then to now like there are so many obviously like times were so different back then but there are so many different threads of continuity and I do think that because I will take every chance possible to bring up Britney Spears (laughs) to touch on like the tabloid culture of then because the way that that kind of a narrative was constructed around what all of the party girls were doing and just the way that sheer fame was so detrimental to people um Rachel Bilson talked about on the OC rewatch podcast about how there were so many less famous people back then you know social media hadn't yet democratized access to a platform and there was still such a divide between us kids at home and and people who weren't celebrities there was not that direct connection how do you how do you feel about that yeah for sure I think social media like totally just like took on a different like life now like there's so many like influencers like they're considered celebrities they go to events but like back in the 2000s, it was like actual like actors and musicians who were like on these red carpets. 
And with social media now, like if I want to know what my favorite celebrity is doing, I'll just go on their page and see what they're doing. Back in the day, they had paparazzi. So like you would look like look in a magazine or like go to preshilton.com or something to see what they're doing. Now I can just like go on their Instagram and see what they're doing. So I think there's such it's so starkly different now. Um, and like, I did used to read Prez Hilton back in the day. Like I'm not proud now, but I was like 14, 15 reading it. Um, and it's just like crazy that it's just so different now. Like, I feel like there's, it's better because there's not that like snarky person like Prez Hilton who was out here, like coming for everyone. Like that's just kind of like with intern is now, but Prez Hilton was like this like person that like everyone, like this biggest villain. Um, it's just so different now and I kind of missed back then when like I didn't know everything about everyone I kind of had to like search and find things now like everyone's just so accessible yeah I think that what Perez Hilton really did to change the landscape there just of media in general was he became a source he was a regular person he wasn't a magazine he wasn't a publication he was I guess an early blogger, if you want to call it mm -hmm. people, this was like before people even had blogs, websites, anything. I mean, we still had kind of like fan clubs. If you really felt like you wanted to support an artist that you really liked, or you would go see a band in concert when they came on tour to your city. But yeah, there really weren't so-called regular people out there who became a source of news. So then instead of going to, just a media's media company's website you could go to this individuals and i think about that a lot too where it's like yes technically in the 2000s we had websites but the way that we accessed information and the the information was not readily available in the same way then that it is now now you can google something and there's 900,000 results in mm -hmm. point 0.1 seconds then it wasn't like that yeah not at all and even with like Perez Hilton he like became his own star which is like wild to think about like I was watching the Britney Circus um tour and like it's wild that he is in the beginning of it like the things he said about Britney were horrible yet he was like in that tour like it's it's just crazy to think about yeah there was a lot of gaslighting going on there where it's like we kind of are fed this narrative and you know Brittany is a perfect example of like having been propped up to make money for other people, sadly, even today. And I was actually just talking about this. I don't remember if it was on the podcast or off, but I went to the Britney Spears circus tour. Oh, no, I don't. I don't even know <laughs> these days whether it's on or off the podcast, but the point because I was going to say, oh, anyone listening, you can listen to that episode. I don't know. I'll find out. But we were in the literal back row and our backs were against the wall still the best oh, concert yeah. ever but it was it was the tour where okay there was this guy just a fan from the audience it was just a, a you know young guy going to see britney spears relatively harmless or so we think and he gets past security past the backup dancers and walks up on stage and there's a video of yes. it on YouTube and you see Brittany like jump out of her skin. And at the time you're like, oh my God, oh, some crazy person. Take him off the stage. We want to hear Womanizer. But then when you really look back at it now, because that was in 2009, um, that's really scary. And the fact that she and Paris Hilton and so many others just had no respect, no privacy. Um, and people were just so intrusive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's scary and it's sad. Yeah, that's the thing with like the tabloid culture. It's like people like shit on them so much. They say so many bad things about them. And then they just think they can. It's like we own them. It's like they're not human beings. Like we own them. They're our entertainment. So yeah, I can just walk on stage because it's Britney Spears. She's not a real person. Or I can just say this thing to Paris Hilton because she's this dumb blonde girl. She's not a real person. So it's it's horrible. That's so interesting when people say, oh, well, they deserve this criticism or whatever because they're famous or, oh, they're so rich. Like, why does my opinion matter about them anyway? And it's like, 
I don't know, because I think it's nice when we have empathy for other people. Right, because they're a <laughs> like, human being and they have know. the same emotions as you do. Like, that's why. Yeah, I'm like, call me crazy, but I maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm naive, but I kind of just think we should be nice to people. Oh, yeah, absolutely. By default and whenever possible. Yeah, people are horrible. <laughs> I think that it hasn't gotten better in terms of kind of like that criticism and bullying and trolling. It's just taken on different forms as culture evolves. Um, I think there's always kind of going to be that, that shadow side of pop culture because we do look at these things from the past and we do acknowledge and understand that so much of it was problematic or so much of it, it, it was just, I mean, I guess that's the expression. It's from a different time, but it is literally from such a different time. Yeah, you're right. But also at the same time, like, I, I don't know if you saw it, but I think it was the new Us Weekly. And it said something about, like, Britney and, like, her marriage. And it was like, I forget what the headline was, but it wasn't nice. And everyone's like, did you learn nothing? Like, there was just 10 documentaries about how the world treated Britney Spears. And now it's 2022 and you're doing the same exact thing to her. So it's in like online too, like people are just ruthless and it's like with Selena Gomez, like she took herself off of, off of social media, which is like the best thing I think you can do, especially at her age. So I feel like it's not as like the media as a whole isn't as negative and horrible, but it's still, you see like creep in sometimes, which is sad. I think it's actually great for celebrities to be off of social media. Like, for example, when a new Netflix show comes out, like Bridgerton, and you see pictures with the cast tagged, and there's always a few people missing. I love when that happens because I'm like, that person in this day and age, because what, 10 years ago, someone might not have had an Instagram just because they're like, oh, I don't really do social media. I don't really do technology. But it's not the technology that makes us all be on Instagram. It's the fact that it enabled, and I'm saying that in the past tense, enabled this kind of social connection and experience. Mm -hmm. Now it's, it's devolved from there, but I think it's great that if a celebrity or a really public facing person can, if it's to protect their mental health, be off of social media, I think that's a really good thing too. Yeah. I can't even imagine like being that caliber of a star and then having to just wanting to go on social media to say like hi to my fans and then just being like bombarded with horrible comments I can't even imagine yeah it is crazy and I think that this culture it's very easy with I talk about the phenomenon of now nostalgia a lot or I call it like nostalgia the remix <laughs> Anything where it's like we look back on it and there's now people who weren't there to experience it firsthand, um, it adds this kind of layer of complexity because it's like you can cherry pick things that you want to keep from the past and kind of forget the rest. And that can be okay. But I think that something major that's come out of this kind of reimagination of the 2000s is the McBling aesthetic has been named i also mentioned the consumer aesthetic research institute like every episode because they put names to these these trends and i mean these trends are really just like a part of a microcosm of like fashion and art and culture that represents society um at large but people mix up McBling and Y2K. And I think that when we think of McBling, that is ultimately, if I have to explain it to someone who's never heard of it or doesn't know what I'm talking about, it's basically trash. It's literal trash 2004. Yeah. That's yes. what it is. <laughs> yeah. To me, like yeah. Y2K is more of like the like futuristic kind of like Mandy Moore candy video where Mick Bling is more of like Pam Anderson on the red carpet. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's too like they're similar, but like if you were there at the time, like you know the difference. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I think that there's there's really a difference between something being in bad taste versus having bad taste. And of course, something being in bad taste depends on the cultural zeitgeist as well. Like something back then where we we thought, oh, this is totally normal. Now we might be like, oh, oh my God, I can't believe we said or did yeah. that. But it, at the time, it's like totally normal and almost expected because it's 
ultimately just a product of the society we live in. But having bad taste, I really think is something that's arbitrary because it's like, who is to say that me loving I want to be bad by Willa Ford in a maybe it's in a slightly ironic way, but it's like, or maybe not. What is literally wrong with that? And and conflating the idea of having bad taste with low culture when it's like low culture. And now in 2022, the like bimbofication mm-hmm. of everything and making kind of this superficiality and vapidness trendy. I think it's super interesting. Yeah, I think it's just fun too. Like not everything you like listen to, watch and like interact with needs to be super like thought provoking and deep. Sometimes like if you're just a fun person and like you don't want to like think too hard all the time, like it's fun just to enjoy like silly movies or like fun music that don't really have that like big of a message to it. So it's not like not everything has to be so deep. That's my thought. (laughs) Yeah, I say about this podcast we have deep conversations about superficial things because that's what it ultimately comes down to I love to think about things I love to speculate and to get to share you know our memories or our our ideas about something like a piece of pop culture that ultimately brought us together it made us feel like a part of something and so it's like we want to explore that but at the same time I'm not going to relate to someone necessarily about like a painting that I saw. Exactly. Yes. That's like, yes, perfect. (laughs) Yeah. It's going to be like, you know, how Blackout by Britney Spears is her most underrated album. It's going to be like that. It's it's a conversation starter. It's perfect. And like, that's how like I find my people. Like if you like, like the same like lowbrow things I like, like I know like we're getting along. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. And I think when I was younger, I used to kind of confuse low culture. And I guess this is, I don't know if this is a stereotype or whatever, but it's like when they say, oh, intellectual people like highbrow things and then, you know, trash likes low culture. And it's like, that is so not true. We pop culture people are like the smartest people ever because we're critical. We pay attention to detail. We have genuine enthusiasm that makes us curious. And that makes us really good at researching and gathering information. And we're always on the pulse of trends. And I don't know. I think it's a great thing. Yeah, absolutely. And everyone that I know that likes the same things I do, like they're the smartest people, like the kindest people, the most like open-minded people. So I think it's like, if you like lowbrow culture, you're like the best person. (laughs) Yeah. Even like I, um, I went to school for fashion. And so there's always that kind of like legally blonde connotation to it. And when I watched, well, not when I watched one of the many times that I've (laughs) rewatched legally blonde, I realized that you know what? She's unapologetically herself and she's super over the top and extra. And so why should she have to apologize? And I really thought about that and used that piece of pop culture as inspiration to be like, so what? So what if, because even there's a scene, probably my favorite scene in the movie where Elle says to her guidance counselor, okay, like I'm going to Harvard. And the guidance counselor is like, okay, what's your backup plan? She's like, no, yes. there is no backup plan. Like, I'm going to Harvard. And then the guidance counselor was like, but your major is <laughs> fashion merchandising. And and I didn't remember that line from when I was a kid. And so the first time I rewatch it as an adult, I was like, oh, my God, see, this is it. It's like those ideas are driven into your head as a kid where, like, if I pursue this career, then I must be dumb. Or if I love fashion – I think it's to express myself, but then to other people, it might seem superficial or frivolous. And I think that that was something really hard that I had to overcome in my young adult life, realizing that you can literally like whatever you want and that's okay. Yeah. And just even her confidence, like Elwood's confidence, like when she's like, what, like it's hard, like she just has that about her. And that's like such an amazing, it's such an amazing movie that we have that like, and we can like pass it on to the next generations. That was the first PG-13 movie I saw in theaters. I was not yet 13, (laughs) but I got to go with my group of friends. So it was like, like how you're mentioning sneaking into a movie theater earlier. We were like, 
acclimated yeah. 13. <laughs> like, which, like, you don't have an ID or anything when you're 13. Right. It's so like I they can't even check, was... but. <laughs> no, no. It's like the opposite of when, you know, your parents kind of, when you pay less for a kid versus an adult movie yeah. ticket, and your parents kind of like, you know, uh, crouch yeah, down stand a behind bit, me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I want to play a game with you. It is called Trashy or Trendy. Yay. And so I'm going to list a bunch of early 2000s McBling slash literal trash associated things. Again, if anybody liked any of these things, then you were probably really cool. Mm -hmm. And if you like them now, you do you. <laughs> Again, this is not about... This is proving the point of having good or bad taste is totally arbitrary. Mm -hmm. So, okay, trashy or trendy. And again, this can be viewed in the past lens or now or both. Von Dutch trucker hats. Oh, uh, trendy forever. Like trashy, trashy in the best <laughs> way, but will always be trendy to me. <laughs> Did you watch the documentary? Oh my God, yes, it was wild. <laughs> It was wild. Um, offshoot of Von Dutch, Ed Hardy. Ooh, I'm going to say trashy. <laughs> yeah, it is. I actually had an Ed Hardy t-shirt. They like they would come, which now that I'm thinking about it, because in the 2000s, and I did an episode on handbags that talks about this more, but it's like people wore counterfeit stuff all the time, which I am against as it is illegal and mm -hmm. tacky, um, as opposed to a knockoff, which is not illegal but still tacky. Um, they would bring like Ed Hardy shirts and mass onto our college campus. And they were like 20. Okay. <laughs> now that I'm saying that it sounds like a Canal yeah. street scenario where they were definitely, so I probably yeah. wore a fake Ed Hardy shirt. That's embarrassing. <laughs> okay. Next. Um, Jersey shore. Oh, uh, I trendy, but like trashy at the same time. But I, I, I was thinking about Jersey shore when you mentioned Ed Hardy. Cause like, that's when I feel like everyone was like, okay, it's over. The Jersey shore guys are wearing it. <laughs> yes. In, um, in my Abercrombie episode, I mentioned that Mike, the situation Abercrombie literally sent him a letter being like, please stop. <laughs> oh my clothing. God on the air that's like they stuff. used to send snooki like the um the gucci bags like louis vuitton would send her gucci so. <laughs> that is so the, funny yeah that's the funniest thing ever i actually saw a tiktok video last last week or something where it was a girl dressed in a full jersey shore getup with uh you know the short shorts like the ripped denim like big furry boots oh, like snooki wore <laughs> with the hair everything but in Italy oh and God. she was like me, me explaining to my boyfriend that I'm dressed <laughs> like this as a comment on, you know, American culture, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it's so funny because I want it to be funny, but I also am Italian American. <laughs> so I'm yeah. like, no, also by, um, by just like the powers that be ancestry and everything i can't yeah, think like, it's you funny can't do that. <laughs> um i can't think it's funny because uh, um although italian american culture is separate from yes. european italian culture like and i do feel like most american people don't have a firm grasp on it as jersey shore is not reflective of european italian yeah. culture i do understand both so i'm like oh, this is this is not making Italian Americans look bad, it's just making Americans oh, yeah. look bad. And I'm like, so I'm like, bad. Ah! But okay. <laughs> so bad. Um, next, BB rhinestone shirt. Oh, iconic, trendy. <laughs> yeah. I never had they're they like kind were. of expensive. Yeah, I, I was feel like, like, I would never have the nerve to ask my mom to buy me that. Like, <laughs> so but I wish I always had one. My mom my mom would have like we would have gone to Michael's and yes. gotten rhinestones or yeah, something make like your that. Own. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Okay. The Playboy bunny motif. Ooh. I'm going to say trashy, but like I, I wanted to be a Playboy girl. So like in, back in the day, but I know my mom and my dad would probably freak out if I ever like bought anything like that. But like, I love it now, but it's still like kind of has that trashy edge to it. Mm -hmm. I would agree in this very very seamlessly transitions into the next one which is tanning in a tanning bed with a sticker <laughs> so you would get us yeah. it would usually be on your hip and so you would get a sticker of 
either the Playboy Bunny, a cherry, Ugh. hearts, maybe even stars. So then that way when you tanned in the tanning bed and you were tan and you removed the sticker, the sticker was – you had a tan line of this design Ugh. and that was I love that. Thin. I think that's trendy. I think that's so <laughs> sick. Like- <laughs> I love that. I never – me did either. it but um what did i have recently i think it was some kind of lotion recently that i put on and i smelled it i'm like i'm in 2007 yeah. right now because this somehow some core memory of tanning in a tanning bed which i do no longer do or condone um just something just Ugh, sets it off. I always wanted to be a tanning girl. I'm like so pale and like I burned, but like I was like, I wish I could go into a tanning bed. It's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I used to tan obsessively uh, in the tanning bed. And the thing about me is that I can get very tan. It's just that it it needs to be prolonged exposure as opposed to like, I can't go out to the beach one day or right. I'll I'll burn but also I'm in my 30s now I care a lot about protecting Mm -hmm. my skin I think that getting older is a privilege and that you you know as you age like it I mean there's a genetic factor but also it's like how you take care of yeah 100% you know so anyway um because I literally used to then when I stopped bed tanning I spray tanned like once a week when I was in college (laughs) It, but that's what people yeah. did. That's what people did. I don't know. I'll explain it to my future kids one day and they'll be like, yeah, like me, you what? Do? And I'll be like, <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, it was just, just <laughs> trust me on this one. Okay. Juicy Couture tracks. Um, forever trendy. I love them. <laughs> like the new, the mm-hmm. new Juicy is kind of like, I feel like it's all over the place, but like the original ones, iconic forever. Mm-hmm. Okay. Belly button piercings with dangly... Ooh. Uh, jewelry. I feel like now trashy, but back then it was like the trendiest thing to do. <laughs> yes. Um, Adriana Lima had her belly button pierced. And so if she did it, I was going to do it. Yeah. Oh, like with and, Britney's, I'm like, oh, yeah. Britney's so cool. She has it like, I remember when she got it pierced because she didn't have it pierced for a little bit. And I think I'm like maybe like late 2000, 2001. And I was like, oh my God, she has it pierced. Mm hmm. Um, and then part B to that is nose piercings. Ooh, nose rings. I think trendy. I feel like I love like a little like hoop. Yes. I, so when I was in call, when I went to college, the first month I was in college, I went and I got my belly button <laughs> and my nose pierced. Double whammy. <laughs> and I went, I mean, I like really went for it. And I came home for Thanksgiving and everyone saw my nose ring and they were not happy. And I cried and I was like, why can't, I bet Adriana Lima doesn't have to deal with this. Britney Spears does not have to put up with this in her home. Um, okay. Let's see. What is next? Oh, speaking of Victoria's Secret, love spell perfume. Ooh, trendy. I I love it. (laughs) Okay. My sister still has one. I don't even think she knows it's in the closet. I'm going to steal it. Okay. Pink and green and zebra print bedroom. Oh my God. That was literally my room. Um, so I'm going to say trashy, (laughs) but I, but I loved it. Like that's my favorite room. Like the ceiling was green and then the walls were pink and I had like zebra pillows. (laughs) That's incredible. When I was in high school, I had, it was very PB teen. It was dark pink and light pink plaid, I guess, with some green accents. And then there was like the white sham pillow with the little pink pom poms (sighs) around it. And then those lanterns, like those paper circular lanterns that everyone has. I had a green one and a white one and a green I forget what these chairs are called. They're like very 70s where... I think I know what you mean. Like kind of rounds, like a half round. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah, it's like this half moon round kind of chair, um, which was lime green. And then we we graduated from the plaid to when I went to freshman (laughs) year. My freshman year of college was completely unhinged. (laughs) It was crazy. If you knew me, no, you didn't. I had pink with green and zebra and there was a TikTok that came out and it was like, if you had 
this as your decor, <laughs> if you had that as your decor, and it was the most spot on thing I've ever seen in my life. It said, oh, if you had the zebra, basically it was yeah. like your trash. Like, yes, I'm like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. And then there was another room where it was like teal with kind of like a Paris oh, yeah. theme and like black and white. Um, And I sent it to my sister. She's like, I think they <laughs> stole pictures from my room for this TikTok because that is People get it so me. spot on. I'm like, my friend had that room. Like, it's just crazy how people like just know. <laughs> Absolutely. What is next? Um, Okay, cheetah print. Ooh, I'm going to say trashy now, but like I loved a good cheetah print. Some I have like one cheetah print dress that I'll wear once in a while, but like I remember – People would go all out, like have everything cheetah print head to toe. And I think that's like a little much. <laughs> I had a cheetah print metallic Betsy Johnson <sighs> messenger backpack. Amazing. Amazing. College. Yeah, there's like a picture in my dorm room and you can see it hanging from, you know, the bunk bed post. And it's like, I kind of love wow. that though. It's like cheetah girls culture. It's like, I love oh, it. I love it. <laughs> Truly, like in a hundred years, people will look back and be like, this was from yes, 2008. it's such a time capsule. And they'll just know. <laughs> they will just know. Okay, um, hair extensions. Um, trendy. Like I love like long, trashy hair extensions. I had them for a while, but not anymore. <laughs> I Okay, so now I'm obsessed with what me and my um, hairstylist call the Nick, which is this haircut, which is like my short... Thank you. I love it too. My short, blunt bob. But until 2020, like my entire life, I had long oh, wow. ass hair, like down to my hips. It was always so long, so thick. And it was very healthy too. I think the thing with long hair is that it looks great if you maintain yep. it properly. But um, but I never needed extensions. Yeah. Because so, <laughs> I always had long hair. I, I refused to cut it. Yeah, my then, hair used so. to be like bright white like bleach blonde um and I bought like really long extensions and I wear them like I thought it looked so good but like looking back I'm like I look crazy like <laughs> we bleach yeah. blonde hair that's one too oh Trashy trendy forever trendy. I want to go back to it but it was just my hair like needed a break so like I needed to go back brunette but I'm planning on getting there again like I think it's just like the best look ever on someone <laughs> That's amazing. Whenever I see someone with my haircut, but with blonde hair, I look at them and I'm like, oh, what if, but it's like, no. And it would be, my hair is so dark that it would, yeah. it the would be a whole is, process. Ugh, I think that, it, yeah, I think that one day if I just start to really go gray and I have a few pieces, I'm hoping that it, it turns into a Stacey ugh. London moment or as I like to refer to it, a Kitty Bartholomew <laughs> moment. She was an HGTV um, host <laughs> in the 90s. And she was just, she was basically like a barefoot Contessa coastal grandmother kind of woman with like that, that gray swoop of hair. So I'm like Kitty Bartholomew moment. Um, and then maybe we could do the Yeah, you just have whatever, your chic but... gray moment. Yeah. Yeah. And then lastly, on trashy or trendy, acrylic square <laughs> French manicure. Nails. Um, trashy, but I appreciate it for the time that it was popular in. <laughs> I never got my nails done when no. I was younger. Now I love a gel manicure. I can't live without it. But then I never did my nails. My nails actually truly and I mean this in the worst way possible did look like trash <laughs> oh my god I remember for my fourth grade like end of the year dance my sister is like 10 years older than me so she would get her nails done all the time and like she would get like cool designs and she would keep them in her room and I was like hey can I wear like your nails like to my dance and she's like yeah so I had I was like 10 years old and I had like crazy long nails all different things and I was like everyone look at my nails so whenever I think of like acrylics, I think of that moment. Like I was 10 years old looking crazy with acrylics on my fingers. One of the main giveaways when you see someone today trying to pull off a McBling aesthetic in 2022, the nails are always a dead giveaway because we did not have, we meaning um, like young or teenage girls didn't go and get, like getting your nails no, done was not, at all. not a thing. I remember for like birthday parties, like, 
a mom would do everyone's nails, but like no one was going to the salon as like a 12 year old to get their nails done. Like it just wasn't a thing. <laughs> yeah. I went to a birthday party once where we all yeah. got our nails done, but right. It was like, like someone's with, mom, you know, two yeah, coats, someone's mom, nail polish. right. It was always like that. Yeah. Right. It was always someone's mom. Like I knew someone whose mom worked at the, yeah, I think it was because her mom worked yeah. at the nail salon or something. And then I had another friend in elementary school who dyed her hair, but it was because her yeah, mom was Yeah. And that was like the coolest thing when someone dyed their hair. I was like a kid. You're like, oh my God, you're allowed to do that. <laughs> yes. She actually had the, the bottoms of her hair, the tips of her hair. <sighs> pink and this was when Gwen oh Stefani God. had pink hair so it was like that's major that was cool but also me and Gwen Stefani had braces <laughs> I at the love same that time. so <laughs> pink hair Gwen that, with the yeah. braces is like top tier Gwen <laughs> I think so too people love the blue hair as well but I'm like I'm sorry I have to give it to the unapologetic braces oh, I love that moment so good Thank you so much for being here with me today. This thank you. I had the so best fun. time. All right. And thank you guys so much for listening. We will Bye. see you next time. Bye.